this lesson we're going to be looking at the graphs of the derivative. So for example, I've just put a function here and I've sketched it and we can tell that it's a cubic function. When we're talking about the derivative, remember we're looking for the gradient of the tangent at any point along this function. So you can imagine this point here, if we had to draw a tangent line, we could say draw a straight line like that and we know the gradient because it's going up from left to right, we can tell that has a positive gradient. All right, if we draw at another point, so we can draw another point here in the middle, we draw a tangent line, we can see it's got a negative gradient. At the turning point here, you get a horizontal line, so the gradient of that would equal zero, and you'd have another one there, m equals zero, and over here, you'd see it's positive. So one technique people draw is what's called a sine diagram. So the sine being positive or negative, and we've got zero here, so at key points, let's label this point A, and this can be point B. We can tell at A, we're at zero, at B, we're at zero, and to the left of A, or when X is less than A, we can see that the tangent line, no matter where I draw it along here, is going to be a positive line. So we draw it positive, and then at A, it's zero. Between A and B, we can see no matter where the tangent line is, it's going to have a negative gradient, and then after B, we've got a positive gradient. So when we're sketching our derivative, let's draw it in purple, we want the function that we're sketching here to be positive, and then at A, it's gonna be at zero. So I know my turning point, or I know my intercepts at A and B now. So it's gonna be zero at this point and this point, and when X is less than it, we can see that it's gonna be positive. So I have to start up here, positive, and then when I'm at B, in between A and B, I'm at negative. And you can see here now my function on this side here is all negative, and then after B it's positive, so it comes back up. And you'll probably notice here that we went from a cubic function, so cubic, and over here we can tell that this is a quadratic. And hopefully you see the pattern is when we're finding the derivative, like we did in the previous exercises, when we're deriving a function, the power of x drops down by one. So the graph of the derivative is actually just gonna look like um, a degree less polynomial. So if we had a cubic, the derivative graph will be a quadratic. If I had a quadratic, the derivative of that would be a linear. If I had a quadratic, power of four, derivative would be a cubic, power of three. Let's have a look at another example. Let's say, let's say we had a couple values. Let's say we had a turning point at three, four, and let's put some intercept values in. Let's say just one and five just go to either side of it and add a quadratic like this. That's a terrible drawing there. Let's say I had to find the derivative of this. So this is my function. All right, then I was asked to sketch the derivative. So the derivative f dash x of all this, I can see here, positive, 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 and then at three it's zero. So that's the first point I put in. x equals three is gonna be my intercept. And then everything greater than three even at five and going down, it's just gonna have a negative gradient. So we start at positive and then we're negative. So we start at positive, go down, and we see we get a straight line graph. If we had to find certain values on here, we could find our equation. We've got, if this was one and five, we could find this quadratic equation, derive it to find this linear equation if we wanted to. Okay, so in the exercise, you're gonna give in a number of graphs, have to match them up with the graphs of their derivative. Um, you might be asked to find the equations or find when the derivative is going to be greater than or less than zero. So for example, let's just have this here. This is f of x and let's just put in some random values. Let's say this is negative two, five and this can be the point for se uh, negative seven. And then if this is f of x, then when is f of the derivative here, when does the derivative equal zero? You'd say it's gonna be at these two points. So when x equals negative two or x equals positive four. You could say when is it uh, negative? So you could say when is the derivative less than zero? 
and we'll go, well, that means when is the derivative negative? So you look at anywhere here, positive, 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 zero, and then you go, ah, negative. So it's in between two, negative two and four. So you'd say when x is in between negative two and positive four. Okay, all the best with 17d.